friends i am now with my new lecture called seismic serving principle and the concept of seismic wave propagation so in this lecture i will be talking about all the concept of the seismic wave and the um, uh, the their velocity stress strain in elastic moduli and the reflection refraction travel time curves and the coefficients what are the direct waves refracted waves reflected waves equation for the travel time curves how they travel and what are the different types of seismic sources and the seismic pulse type so i have already discussed about gravity and magnetic survey uh, but uh, in detail now by the request of many viewers i am uploading this uh, very detailed survey that is and very costly seismic reflection and the refraction survey for oil and gas exploration so before that i will be delivering some basic concepts about it and it is very important topic for the upcoming so what are the different kinds of seismic survey and its objectives seismic waves are generally a controlled source method and propagate through the subsurface and there will be reflection and refraction at the geological boundaries within the subsur within the subsurface the techniques of the seismic reflection and the refraction seismology they are using artificial and controlled explosions they were developed in search of the oil and the petroleum they are the energy pulses are reflected from the subsurface and they are recorded at the near normal incidence and we can actually measure the travel times and that travel times can be converted into the estimates of depth to the interface and there are receivers to receive the signal from reflection or the refraction to detect the ground survey for marine survey there are uh, receivers that are several kilometers long uh, what is the i mean comparison of the with earthquake seismology that earthquake seismology provides information on the gross internal layering of the earth and the measurement of the velocity of the earthquake but seismic surveying they can provide a clear and detailed picture of the subsurface geology that is on a small scale not a bigger scale and we can and the depth that we can measure from the seismic surveying is down to the tens of kilometer using the artificial source method so before proceeding to the seismic survey we need to understand what types of seismic waves can be generated by an earthquake or the man made source to unravel the structure of the earth's interior okay now seismic surveying there are two types of surveying that is reflection and the refraction method and there will be difference between that generally these methods are widely applied to the exploration problems and the mapping of the subsurface for both the methods generally receivers are laid out at a distance along the profile through the short point and that short and receiver distance are small for the reflection survey that distance whereas that for the refraction survey that is very large 10 to 100 of km during the crustal survey generally reflection method is widely used in the oil industry for the mapping of sedimentary sequences the reflection seismology is directed primarily at finding the depths to the reflecting surface and the seismic velocities of the subsurface layer Reflection seismic data are most usually acquired along profiles that is crossing the geological structure. That means we need to take the seismic reflection data uh, linearly to the normal to the strike of the structure, the major uh, axis of any body that is strike, and we need to um, carry out the seismic reflection uh, survey normal to the strike of the data. Okay. Generally, refraction is carried out when there is an abrupt increase in the velocity with depth and which is addressing the crustal thickness and depth to the bedrock. When you map the crustal thickness, that receivers are laid out far distance, 10 to 100. So, that is main difference between reflection and the refraction survey. For reflection survey, we are having reflected wave, direct wave and refracted wave. Apart from the reflected wave, all are considered as the noise and they are to be eliminated. Generally, when we use a instead of single hydrophone, we use a group of interconnected hydrophone or the geophones for land or the marine survey to eliminate the noise or to reduce the noise. To understand different types of seismic waves that propagate through the ground, some elementary concepts we need to discuss regarding the so stress and strain relation and Hooke's law. We can hear. Yeah. So, in your undergrad physics uh, experiment, if you are doing it, you must have uh, uh, 
I mean, read about the stress strain concept. When there is external force, there will be a balanced internal force, and stress is the measure of the intensity of the internal force balance. When, a, when we apply stress to the body, it undergoes a change in the shape and the size. Up to a certain limiting value of the stress, let me show you a figure that is called yield strength of the material. The strain is the linear and within that limit, stress is proportional to strain. That is called the Hooke's law and that is within the reversible limit. So we remove the strain and it will be a removal of the stress or vice versa. So if our yield strength is exited a certain value in that way in that region our strain becomes non-linear and the irreversible that is called plastic or the ductile strain when you increase the stress furthermore the body fails by the fracture okay and that linear relationship between the stress and strain in the elastic field uh, can be specified by various elastic modulus which is the ratio of the stress to the strain So what type of elastic modulus are there? There will be bulk modulus, young modulus and the shear modulus. So I think in your undergrad physics practical also young modulus experiment you have carried out with a block that will, I mean from a thread there will be a block and the block will be, there will be displacement. So from that stress by strain ratio. So let me show you this longitudinal, suppose we apply, when we, when we uh, pull a rod or compress, there will be an increase in the length or the compression. So suppose we pull it by a force, longitudinal force, force per unit area, that means stress, and there will be increase in length, L plus delta L. So Young's modulus is defined as longitudinal stress means force per unit area divided by the stress, increase in length divided by the original length. Now in another case, we have we have hydrostatic pressure that we apply to the cubic element. So pressure is applied from both the sides, many sides, and there will be compression. So accordingly, the bulk modulus can be characterized as volume stress divided by the volume strain. Another thing is the shear modulus. So we have a cube, a force is applied to it, there will be shear stress, that force is applied in this direction, delta F divided by the cross-sectional area A, and there will be an increase in length. So I have uh, shown you that increase in length that delta L by L. Very interestingly, the, uh, for uh, when you apply that uh, that uh, shear stress to the rigid body, there will be no increase in the length. So uh, that implies that shear modulus tends to infinity. So, uh, but in case of fluid, there is no resistance to shearing because rigid body offers is full resistance to the shearing. That's why the mu tends to infinity. But in case of fluid, if you physically imagine, if we apply shear stress there will be infinite almost increase in the length and that's leading to the shear modulus tends to zero. That's why shear wave cannot pass through fluids, that means liquids or gases. That elastic constants are generally determining how fast the waves travel through the medium. I will tell about what is the body waves, this concept. Let me show, tell you about some seismic survey of land and the yeah, what I've showed tell you that for see, refraction path. This is a ref, generally for refraction. This source and the receiver distance are very much far distance away for crustal survey, but for the depth to the bedrock, it is almost not very much far distance away. And this is the reflection path. Similarly, for and this is the second for refraction, the rays travel at the greater. Uh, uh, second layer at more, much more time but for uh, uh, this is uh, this is the seismic survey carried out in the ship and there is source seismic source wave front of the is there uh, ray is there so seismic waves uh, is generated and they will travel through different subsurface sedimentary layered sequences there is a sea bed in this end and the detectors are laid out at, laid out at several distances at many distances there will be a group of hydrophones and from this will cancel the noise and these are shown as the path of the reflected waves at different sequences of the sedimentary layer for oil and gas industry this is for the offshore survey and this seismic is the land survey there is a source of this picture is described in that I want to show you in glimpse. Next, 
uh, let me tell you about the primary and the what are the body waves what are the surface waves actually seismic waves are the elastic strain energy that propagate outward from any seismic source from any seismic source the energy goes out in a equal direction or due to the earthquake or artificial explosion and their velocity are determined by the elastic modulus that means k mu and rho rho is the travels that i have described and there are two groups of seismic waves how will determine body waves if the waves that will travel through the earth interior that is called the body waves there are primary and the shear waves for the body waves primary means compressional waves and if the earth move along the surface that means they are surface waves generally body waves the one of the body is a compressional waves that means longitudinal the primary waves that propagate by compressional and the dilatational strains what is the example sound wave that means direction of propagation is a perpendicular uh, particle vibration is part uh, parallel to the direction of the propagation that is a sound wave and during my electromagnetic lecture i have discussed and show visual uh, figures of the light wave that is the shear wave they propagate by the shear strain which is in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the wave travel example is just uh, light wave our this is a surface wave and this is a body wave so after that move along the surface after the explosion on the earthquake and the body wave move up that means uh, travel to the body of the wave generally this is a very important point seismic surveying used only compressional waves because seismic detectors recording only the ground vertical motion and they are sensitive to the horizontal motion of the s wave they are insensitive so for if we record s waves and surface wave they gives greater information about the subsurface okay but that will be at a cost of greater data acquisition so it is very important point what is the velocity of the p and s waves any velocity is determined by the root over of the elastic modulus divided by the density of the material so in case of body waves the velocity will be k plus 4 by 3 mu this equation and for surface wave the velocity is root over mu by rho Mu is the shear strength, all are, and rho is the density through which they travel. Now that we can see, the compressional waves uh, have greater velocity than the shear wave in the same medium. That means if density remains same, we know fluids have do not have any shear strength, so shear wave cannot pass through liquids, or fluids, air, water, and earth's outer core that are fluids. And if the rock becomes more and more compact, that means the elastic modulus that k and mu increases and they increases more than the density so the ratio will uh, increase that that ratio will be increasing more and more and if we decrease porosity that will also lead to the increase in the velocity of the compression on the shear waves when there is a seismic wave uh, there is a change from liquid state uh, to the solid state the speed up of seismic waves will be there Uh, due to that increase in the shear because in liquids uh, because uh, shear wave cannot pass through liquid so mu will be zero but for solid medium the mu will be more and if we know the velocity of p waves is higher so they always reach a detector before any s waves and so they are easier to recognize so most seismic surveys generally use compressional waves because of their higher velocity and the ground motion that i have already uh, described uh, vertical motion for many arts material that velocity these are all observation from the seismic wave velocity what are the factors that are controlling the wave velocity and how the with medium that is velocity is changing increasing or decreasing for many arts material the surface wave velocity is uh, 60% of the primary wave velocity rayleigh wave velocity is 90% of the surface wave velocity so the rayleigh wave velocity is lesser than primary or the shear waves and rayleigh wave velocity is approximately half of the primary wave that vr is the rayleigh wave that is surface wave now i will show you the particle motion in the compression and the shear wave i think in uh, in my lecture through uh, electromagnetism that uh, uh, i mean light wave the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation so that is from for the shear wave let me show you for compressional wave if there is a direction of propagation in this direction and particle motion also in the same parallel to the direction of propagation example is a sound wave and how the wave travels 
web travels by a series of compression and the dilatation compression that is compressed in this direction and the dilatation you can see easily picturally for shear wave there is a shear that is shear vertical wave that is shear horizontal wave if there is a direction of propagation in this direction in the same so the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of propagation this shear vertical wave and in shear horizontal wave it is in that direction there are two types of shear waves so generally you can see there is a direction of propagation in the x direction if you can uh, assume it is x the particle movement will be along y perpendicular so you can see direction of propagation for compressional waves that is compressional travels through this is the region of compression the density of the dots that will define it. and the where there is a rare there is a rare fraction this region and there is a compression so that's so in that way the compressional wave travel but for the shear wave we can see that the motion of the particles in the rod that are perpendicular to the direction of the propagation in this direction this arrows are defining so i hope you have already visualized this how the um, direction of propagation is related to the um, particle motion for both compressional and the shear wave and in case of surface wave that is a retrograde elliptical particle motion for the rally wave we can see and for the love waves the particle motion in, in and out of the phase generally they are comparable with this uh, shear horizontal motion and for rally waves this is the direction of propagation is same in the direction and the particle motion is in that elliptical motion okay now as i am repeatedly talking about the seismic waves so let me give some glimpse about the waves and the wave fronts seismic waves generally propagate outward from the seismic source which is with a velocity that will be determined by the physical properties of the wave the wave front is the locus of all points that the pulse reach at a particular time suppose the pulse is traveling through homogeneous wave so the velocity will be uh, same in all direction that means it is called isotropic nature and away from the source so that at any subsequent time of the wave front the at any subsequent time the wave front will be that uh, i mean sphere so this is the wave front ideal case uh, the pulse uh, is reaching at a, a pulse is traveling at a equal velocity in all direction so wave front will be perfect sphere but in ideal case is always not uh, applicable when there is a wave front of the p wave so there will be change in velocity or any wave so in the many segments the wave will be speed up and in many segments the wave will be bending speed down so bending in a dis bending will be there and there will be resulting in the distortion from the perfect sphere so let me show you this is a source and the p waves is traveling a different direction so the velocity will be changing is not same in all direction so the perfect sphere will be distorted and you can see the rays are perpendicular to the the ray paths that are always perpendicular to the wave front there is a p wave wave front so source i have mentioned how you can also read from that but you have a preliminary knowledge about the waves and the wave front before proceeding to the seismic surveying now you have i think this is also very important point reflection and refraction and when there is a at an interface between two rare uh, rock layer the energy of the seismic pulse is just divided into reflected and the transmitted ray the reflection the amount of energy that is reflected is determined by the contrast in the acoustic impedance what is the acoustic impedance this term is the <clears throat> uh, multiplication of the density and the velocity more the energy is reflected the greater is the contrast in the acoustic impedance you can see the reflection coefficient it is the ratio of the amplitude of the reflected wave to the incident wave and for a normally reflected ray we can the uh, incident ray we can determine the reflection coefficient will be the uh, contrast in the acoustic impedance z2 minus z1 divided by z2 plus z1 so if there is no acoustic impedance contrast if z2 is equal to z1 the reflection will be zero that means coefficient so there will be no waves will be reflected if there is no contrast in the acoustic impedance along a surface and the transmission coefficient is divided as the ratio of the transmitted ray to the amplitude of the incident ray so if generally for a surface interface the reflection coefficient is limited within the 0.5 uh, 
and plus or minus is de uh, determined by this density if it is going from lower density or higher density this product is less than this here there that will be negative and they are typically much less than 0 0.2 so normally the bulk of the seismic energy is transmitted and only a few proportion is so now we show pictorially the reflection the refraction of the reflect uh, oblique ray and <coughs> with the snell's law i think uh, you can determine when there is an incident wave suppose p wave it is incident uh, on an interface which is having a acoustic impedance they will be reflected and the transmitted p wave and some compressional energy is also converted into the reflected and the transmitted s waves but that are polarized in a vertical plane in another day i will uh, show, tell you about the concepts of polarization that is so this is one medium that is uh, in z1 is the acoustic impedance one v1 so there will be acoustic impedance contrast accordingly the waves will be reflected and there will be refracted p wave and refracted s waves so there is an empirical relationship with the source with the reflection reflect uh, coefficient <coughs> associated with the velocity of the two layers from which the rays are reflected and you can see for there will be theta theta one angle there will be angle of incidence theta one will be angle of reflection from the sense law because for the reflection that v1 will be v2 so sin theta one will be sin theta two so theta one is equal to theta two and refracted rays there will be angle of uh, refraction theta two uh, so if from the sense law we can tell that if the velocity of the <coughs> second layer is greater than v1 the ray is refracted away from the normal in this direction so because the theta 2 will be greater than theta 1 as per the velocity and if it is going from uh, lower velocity uh, higher velocity layer to lower velocity layer so accordingly theta 2 will be lesser and the waves will be uh, coming towards this normal in that way there is a snell's law relation we can determine the rays are refracted away or close to the no normal to the interface Suppose now I will tell you about the reflection. So what happens for a single layer interface there, there will be source of energy waves will be reflected and there will be from this, this is a travel time from for the reflector from uh, source to the receiver. X is the offset distance means distance from the source to receiver. Now that is the travel time. So I will urge everyone to determine this travel time how we will determine this tra total travel time for reflection but let me show you and uh, this this is the source of energy is there so rays will be reflected from a source of energy and detectors are placed at a certain distance from each other so as per the acoustic impedance contrast the rays will be reflected in a single interface yeah, from this equation if we can tell that if the dis distance between short and receiver is zero so the time will be t0 so that will be 2z by v for a reflected ray you can see that time that travel time this is the equation for the travel time you can see this equation is the equation for the hyperbola and according to that equation this is a source to receiver and there will be a vertical distance depth or travel time curve so in that this is the near source to receiver distance and as you move away x will be greater this will greater source to receiver distance uh, <clears throat> for your convenience, let me show you one, one uh, path through which you can determine the travel time. So travel time will be determined by the length L1 plus L2 total travel distance divided by the velocity. So we do it uh, with our own to come to this equation. So and that is for the that equation is the near surface incidence. T0 that means vertical reflection to z or to h by divided by the velocity v1. Yes, it is a h distance. So for reflection surface, the source and there we are assuming uh, vertical uh, reflection almost source is near to the receiver is very near to the source. So this curve is a travel time curve for the reflection. Now, in case of direct and critically refracted waves, what are the travel time curves? So, what is a direct wave? Let me show you the figure. Yes. So, when there is a source, so waves are directly without any reflection, refraction wave, waves are directly reaching the detector. So, this is the distance from source to receiver. 
and so the travel time td is equal to x by velocity the upper surface velocity so from this slope we can determine the velocity of the direct wave to reach from the source to receiver for the body wave now we will tell you another important thing that is critically reflected arrival when we, we are having velocities higher in the underlying layer there is a particular angle of incidence that is this angle of incidence for this there are many angle of incidence what is the velocity is higher for a particular angle of incidence the angle of refraction will be 90 degree and that is called critically refracted ray for which the wave travels along the interface at a very high velocity means second p2 so what we can see from the snell's law the angle of incidence is the theta c for particular angle of incidence angle of refraction is 90 degree so from that relation we can determine the critically uh, refracted angle sine inverse v1 by v2 and now uh, let me show you the travel time curves for the critically refracted ray the, from the source the there will be ray and for critically refracted ray the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees so waves will be traveling at the higher velocity layer more time and the, and this is the travel time curve for the critically refracted ray so how from the equation we get it let me show you so suppose there is three layers are there for each segment suppose from this segment the time travels distance divided by the velocity so from 41 the distance is h by cos theta c divided by the velocity for this segment that time spent is t2 so what is the distance that is x total uh, source to receiver distance minus this distance that is that is we have to uh, omit this distance h tan theta c h tan that means 2 h tan theta c so we will get this distance and then what is the velocity v2 and for this segment also t1 is equal to t3 now total travel time is you have to sum up after summing up we can reach to this equation now we have to apply snell's law sin theta c divided by the cos theta c because sin theta c is equal to v1 by v2 i have already shown for critically refracted rays using the snell's law the angle of refraction will be 90 degree so from that we will reach to this equation that is sin theta c that is also sin theta c sin square theta c 1 minus sin square theta c means cos square theta c so after that we will reach to the equation of total travel time is equal to this term that term is a t axis intercept we can define it as a t1 just like in reflection we had, uh, there is one term called t0 near surface vertical reflection that is t1 and there will be uh, x y v2 so this is a straight line equation with the intercept is t1 and the, the slopes will be increasing in that direction but uh, slope will be 1 by v2 that means 1 by velocity of the upper layer okay so uh, this is the travel time curve formula for the critically refracted rays now if we want to compare between the critical travel time curve with the direct rays critically reflected rays we have to draw a picture so from this picture you can see theta c angle that is refract uh, that is angle of incidence for critically refracted rays and that is direct that is a direct ray and there will be reflected rays with the angle of reflection is theta 1 and that uh, that travel time if we uh, plot the travel time curve we can see there will be t axis intercept for the critically uh, that means refracted rays and 1 by v2 is the slope but for the direct wave that slope is 1 by v1 so that means direct wave is very sharp and velocity that velocity is less so that slope will be greater many times greater than this slope for the refracted rays so for the refracted rays that 1 by v2 is very much of uh, less steep than the direct waves and there is a rectangular hyperbola that is the hyperbola curve for the uh, uh, that means reflected rays this curve so we can see at the greater offset i mean at the greater offset uh, this offset there is a so there is a distance called xcr so this is the distance is called crossover distance beyond which the critically refracted waves that arrives before the direct waves so be before that uh, near to the source the refracted waves arrives after the direct waves that means travel time is greater but beyond this distance the refracted waves is uh, arriving at a less time to the before the direct waves so 
and that distance is determined by the velocity and the that distance or the thickness for the layer for the two layer model so and there is another distance called xc which is the closest distance from the source that source from which the critically refracted ray we can observe again i am just recapitulating the travel time curve for the direct wave that is x by v1 the travel time curve for the refracted waves that is there is a t axis intercept and the x by v2 and for the reflected rays it is a hyperbola that means root root means root over of the t0 square plus x square by v1 square but t0 is the near vertical reflection that means two way travel and <coughs> two way travel time this distance divided by the velocity and where t1 is equal to the 2h cos theta c by v1 so i hope from the picture and the travel time relation curve you can easily understand in a in a i mean practically when you are carrying out reflection or the refraction survey what type of waves you can assume in a reflection survey and based on the that travel time curve for the refracted and the direct wave you can omit that refracted and the direct waves in case of reflection survey for which that refracted and direct waves are considered as a noise so the source is there so i have already mentioned this where you can get these curves now uh, let me come very briefly to the seismic source and the seismic pulse type for seismic survey so there are the explosive sources and there are the explosive sources so they are on the land and are generally detonated in shallow short holes to improve the coupling there will be minimum phase pulse that means burst of energy near the time of the event and there will be reverberation which diminishes with time that means the examples are the dynamite and in the land and air gun at the sea and there will be also non explosive land sources there is a vibrosis is the most common example for the reflection survey there it uses a truck mounting vibro vibrators to pass into the ground and uh, an extended vibration of low amplitude and continuously varying frequency that is called the sweep signal uh, the, the pulse type will be zero phase pulse that is a zero phase pulse so there will be equal amplitude between the negative and the positive t axis so uh, generally instead of abrupt exploration that means for the zero zero phase pulse the vibration can be sent into the ground as a sweep of continuously varying frequency there is also minimum phase pulse so generally in a reflection survey uh, we use the minimum phase pulse instead of the zero phase pulse that is the minimum phase pulse is there positive is the positive amplitude is marked, marked as a colored black and this is the negative amplitude okay so this type of sources are generally required for the seismic survey so in detail i will be describing when i will tell in my next lecture about the details of seismic surveying reflection surveying method what are the procedures for the data and the noise reduction in the seismic reflection method particularly okay so these are the reference that i have uh, already mentioned in my book i am in my presentation from the reference i have taken uh, i will just uh, request to you if you like my lecture please share it like it follow it and comment on it if you had any doubt and also turn on the bell notification icon so this is my channel name and uh, this in this channel i i am delivering lecture for the upsc preparation be it a physics be it a geophysics and in the next lecture i will be presenting with all the seismic uh, reflection method principle and the procedures of that uh, data acquisition noise elimination and also maybe with practical cases for the seismic reflection hope you have liked it thank you very much for your patience